today I'm going to be showing you how to win treasure wars every time that you play. If you've been struggling with treasure wars or PvP in general, then this video is definitely perfect for you. Not very many people know about these strategies, and it's very helpful if you do. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. So this first strategy, you're going to want to rush your neighbor as fast as you can. Once you have five gold, go to the shop and get five blocks of wool. The person on the other side is going to be going after you as soon as they get blocks, so you want to do the exact same thing just to make sure that they don't get you first and that you don't die. This is very helpful because it eliminates the threat and you have a higher chance of winning the game because the person that is close to you is no longer there and they can no longer kill you. What you should focus on the most while doing this is getting your opponent's treasure and not letting them get yours. Even if you die, you'll still be able to kill them and you'll be able to respawn. But your opponent won't, so it'll be easier to eliminate them and you'll still be alive and you have a better chance of winning the game. After you do that, you're going to want to upgrade your gold summoner as fast as you can. Go get diamonds and possibly emeralds if you need that much gold. This is so that you can get blocks, armor, and weapons. Everything you need to beat the game requires gold. Honestly, you don't need to get emeralds to upgrade it, but at least get it to level 2 because because level 1 is going to take a really long time to get anything out of it. Another good reason for doing this is so that you can have more blocks and tools than your opponents. You can also get things like end stone or concrete to protect your treasure with. All these are very helpful and will help you win the game. But yeah, let's get into the next one. So this next tip is something that most people don't actually do and it adds up with them losing the game. The reason that this is so helpful is because you're actually eliminating a lot of the competition giving you a much, much higher chance of winning the game. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to circle the outside of the map and kill everyone around the sides. Don't go to the middle because you'll make an easier way for people to get to your base and you'll lose your treasure a lot faster. Doing this makes it very easy for you to get people's treasures and you'll often just end up finishing them off before they have any time to retaliate. Now again, most people don't actually do this. It's very helpful. So make sure that you do this. Don't go to middle unless if you really need armor and people are actually getting like lots of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's get into the next one. So this next one, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on, but I personally think that this is actually what gets most people killed in treasure wars. The next tip is to make sure that you don't spend too much time protecting your treasure. Protecting your treasure takes lots of gold and takes up lots of time also because not only do you have to wait for your gold, but you also have to spend a lot of time building and defending your treasure while other people are out getting diamonds or possibly emeralds. You want to make sure that you control as many diamond summoners as you can so that people have a lesser chance of getting iron armor, which is actually really overpowered in treasure wars. Alright, so the next tip is to make sure that you can get armor as fast as you can. Most people either get armor or don't get armor, so you're not going to be able to kill the people with armor if you don't have armor and people that don't have armor might actually be better at pvp than you best thing to do in this situation is to get armor so that you can always kill the people that don't have armor and have a better chance of killing people that do have armor however i wouldn't focus too much on getting diamond armor because that's not very helpful it certainly is overpowered but it takes up a lot of time and you can finish the game much much quicker if you don't get diamond armor and you just kill everyone in the game so the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to get a stone pickaxe and a stone axe People are sometimes really annoying and place like hundreds of layers over the treasure and you're gonna need some kind of tool to break through that. However, don't worry about doing this if everyone's treasure is gone. As you can see in the gameplay, I actually don't get tools here because, well, I already destroyed the treasure. So yeah, if the treasure is already gone, don't worry about getting any tools because you probably don't need them unless they're building with andesite, then yeah, get them. Don't worry about getting iron tools because that's going to take up lots of diamonds that you could be using to get iron armor or possibly golden apples. So yeah, just spend your gold wisely. Just get tools. If you have enough gold, make sure that your generator is upgraded so you can get these tools. But yeah, without further ado, let's get on to the next tip. All right, so this next tip is you're going to want to make it so that it's hard for people to get to your base. Don't have like a million pathways going to your base. While you're running, you might want to block off spots so that it's harder for people to get to your base if they don't have any blocks and make some harder jumps for people to do so that instead of them trying to bridge up to it, they actually try to make the jump and they fail. This is a strategy that I always use and it really helps me out because people that are trying to go to my treasure while I'm rushing at pre-game actually cannot get my treasure because, well, they're blocked off and they probably don't have any blocks to get to my treasure. It also takes them longer, so yeah, you'll definitely have more time to get their treasure and possibly not use yours at the beginning of the game. Alright, so this next tip actually also applies for Skywars, but it's clean off kills. This doesn't mean to cross team, alright? I've seen so many people cross team in Treasure Wars and it just hurts my brain. But yeah, if you see somebody fighting, after they're done fighting, they're gonna be low, so you could go and finish them off and you'll get a bunch of loot from them. I already see a lot of people doing this, but I know some people that don't do it because they don't wanna cross team, you know? I definitely recommend it if you're running low in resources. So yeah, again, don't cross team. It's annoying and I don't like it and nobody else does. All right, so this next tip is to get a bow. In the recent update they had for Treasure Wars, well, I guess not recent, they actually made the price for a bow up by three diamonds. Now it's five diamonds, but still, not that hard to get and most people actually don't have a bow 
Especially if you're good with the bow, you'll be able to kill people a lot faster, get more treasures, and you'll just have a higher advantage than most people. So yeah, try to get good with a bow and also try getting a bow as much as you can. Don't make it your number one priority. Your number one priority should be A, protecting your treasure and B, getting other people's treasures and finishing off the kills. So yeah, also make sure you get arrows. You need some arrows to use a bow, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I do hope this video is helpful. I do have a Discord server also and I'm almost always online. So feel free to ask me anything there. I'm willing to help out with YouTube tips or any Hive tips you have or just any questions in general. But yeah, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.